What's up everyone, it's Josh here from the Architect Student Blog and welcome back to another video. In today's video I show you how I made this drawing, uh, my exploded axonometric drawing. Now I'll be honest, I've always shied away from tutorials just because I don't actually think I've got that much of a varied skill set. As you might have seen in some of my other videos, my go-to is SketchUp, Photoshop, AutoCAD and InDesign. So anything that you see in the tutorial videos is normally going to be centered around those. But I got some really good feedback on my perspective section tutorial. So I thought I'd do another tutorial just to show you one of the other things that I did uh, during my degree. Believe me when I say it, it's a really, really easy drawing to do. I had a few comments in the last video about the tutorials being a little bit too long. So what I'm going to try and do is just take you through the key steps of each of these uh, again everybody's project's going to be different so i'm not going to spend time showing you how i'm modeling everything up if, if you're using the software whatever software you're using you'll know how to model the individual components but just make sure you've got a level of knowledge of the technical details so that you can start bringing those together so yeah here is how to make an exploding axonometric drawing right so before we start one of the things that you are going to need to know is you will need to have some technical knowledge of how your project's going to come together it doesn't need to be vast you don't need to know every sort of nut and bolt and screw that's going to go into the project but the one thing that's going to really sell this exploded axonometric drawing is actually having the level of detail to show the intricacies and, and the build-up of the project. I won't worry about it too much, it will obviously come as the project develops but it's just one of the key things to note is don't try and rush into this drawing if you don't actually have the technical knowledge or any kind of idea of how the, the, the structural makeup is going to come together because you'll just only have a few component parts and it really just won't sell the drawing. So just to show you where I started I've got this 3D SketchUp model here, as you can see, I, I just chose a section of my project by the way, the idea was that this was one of the individual pods that sat within the project. It's still come over really well, don't bite off more than you can chew and ultimately try and do the whole project if you just need to take a snapshot. I mean the principle of it's really straightforward, once you've actually spent the time modelling the individual elements of the detail, the, the, the drawing itself comes together fairly quickly. Um, so as you can see, I've just taken each element of the structure and broken it down into an individual group. So I've got the kind of timber shingles that form the exterior cladding, the counter buttons, a membrane, the two layers of insulation and counter buttons, a sort of cross laminated timber structure, another vapor barrier, and then obviously the internal plywood finish. That's sort of going from outside to inside here. Um, we've also then got the floor makeup, as you can see. Th these pods were actually elevated off the ground, so I came up with some kind of steel tubular structure, which you can see there, with just some kind of welded beams and, and bolted beams going across to pick up the, the timber suspended floor that was just made out of posi joists. Now, again, Utilise the 3D warehouse where you can when it comes to the technical details. These posi joists were just downloaded straight from the 3D warehouse. And then obviously just show the, the floor construction being built up into the actual pod itself. And then as you can see, I've just put a bit of context in the pod. I hadn't originally done that. That made a massive difference because it just made it look that little bit more lifelike. Um, and then as you can see, going out the other way, the, the, the wall structure is identical. So what I've simply done is just taken a copy, taken off the windows and the balcony and just flipped it around the other side. Don't spend more time than you need to. If it's not going to be seen, really don't worry about it. And then obviously, as you can see here, just showing the build up of the roof structure. So I've got the kind of internal plywood lining, a layer of insulation, the sort of timber battens and rafters going over the top, the insulation actually being then laid over the top of that, a single ply membrane over the top, and then this kind of little roof lantern detail. So to do this and make everybody's life easier, what I actually did was use a, a SketchUp extension called 1001 Bit Tools and all, all you simply do is select the surface that you want to create the rafters and joists from and click Create Rafters Joists. It brings up a menu, you can specify the raf rafter width, the rafter depth and the rafter spacing and to be quite honest it is very much as simple as pressing a button and it will produce that for you. You'll obviously have to get used to the software and just make sure all of your planes are all aligned to get it to work, but it will, to be quite honest, it will make exactly this that you're seeing here in front of you. Um, and then I'll just quite simply use, the, uh, use these planes, extruded it up, 
um, to create the insulation layers and gave it a yellow colour. So yeah, I mean, it is as simple as just going through the technical detail of your project, whatever it might be, component of the project, breaking it down into the individual parts and then just simply layering them. Spend a bit of time, obviously, just seeing how they're gonna sit. You wanna be able to see everything. You wanna give enough space so that you can actually see all of the components, but not so much that, you that they're sort of tiny and you can barely read them. So I'll just show you Here's a few of the scenes that I, and then all I did from there, and I'll do this with every SketchUp export that I do, I've sort of got two lines, two styles. So I'll have a colored style, which is the one that you can see there, which is just color with a simple line. Um, to make it as sleek as possible, make sure you've got your profile set to one. So you'll just see here how many extra lines that adds, but then if I just change that back down to one again, it just makes it that much sleeker. And then another trick that I do is then I'll, I'll export that as a JPEG. However, that, you know, export the scene as a JPEG. I think one of the key things to note as well, and probably one of the mistakes that I made, is set your scene and export your images even as test runs early. I, I found myself spending so much time on some details that really weren't necessary. So always make sure you export first and just have a bit of a trial run. It'll let you see how it's all going to sit on the page and, and whether reading well and set up another scene and just set the scene there we go that's the one select that one you want to add a pro add the profiles on that one because sometimes it gets missed and then I just export it as a line drawing as well um, that's really useful obviously depends what kind of style you're going for with your final imagery if you just want to do an exploded axonometric with a line that's the easiest way to do it and to be quite honest I'm sure people would be happy with that I always like to add a little bit of color to mine just because it went with the render style that I was going for yeah so once you've done that export it add the you know make sure you've got shadows turned on and all, all that business then you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like this so this is obviously the final image so let me just turn that off for you let me just turn that off the material specification so yeah so that was that's how i exported it from sketchup as you can see let me just find a layer there so i'll put some texture layers over the top just to give it a bit of texture that was something that i used to do to be quite honest i don't do that anymore because I, I don't actually think it adds all that much as you can see here's my black and white with shadow um, black and white without shadow if i wanted to so you could end up with a line drawing that just looks something like that which again i think sells the project just as well but i just like to add a little bit of color to mine um, and then what that allows you to do is you can just layer up the drawing so you, you can just really start adding adding that level of detail so what i would do is i normally add the black and white drawing with the shadow and then i just put it to a lower opacity um, and that just gives you if you want like a more faded color so it's not quite as intense you can up, up that opacity but I normally kept it at about 20 percent uh, and then the only other thing that I did with this one to finish the project off, to finish the page off sorry is I just added some spot details just on the bits where I was struggling to show absolutely everything just add a little call out add a little spot detail just so you can see exactly how that structure is going to go together so on this one I was just showing how the bolt how the steel frame was going to be bolted with the timbers going across it um, and on this one here just showing how the timber structure was actually going to be bolted to the c-section steels to pick up the the timber suspended floor going above it so when i first came on to the, into photoshop i just added a bit of text now this text just went with the kind of scheme of the whole project so i'd got this idea of a little paper clip and a little note on the side because it was um, a hospital project or a cancer care facility so i just like the idea of it looking like a bit of a doctor's note again going into the level of detail it was obviously my master's degree so i was obviously trying to pick up the u values going through the roof the the walls and the floor there again if you can be as detailed as possible one really good website to check out if you want u values and things like that is the kingspan u value calculator it will ultimately give you nearly everything that you need in terms of um, the insulation and what u values you can achieve so make sure you check that one out i use that all the time for my tech module to make sure that i was achieving the kind of u values that i wanted for the project and then i just added a little material specification just to give a little bit more detail and to be quite honest just to fill a little bit of space that pretty much gives you the exploded axonometric drawing quite simply get your head around your structure layer the individual elements modeling them in sketchup take those apart 
give yourself enough space, set a scene, export it, bring it into Photoshop, play around with the layers, the line weights, uh, make sure you're layering your line drawing over your colour drawing to make sure that the colour's not going to be too overbearing and then just add a little bit of detail around the edge of it and it's as simple as that. So that is how to very quickly create an exploded axonometric drawing using SketchUp and Photoshop. to keep this one short because a few people say on Instagram that the last tutorial videos that I did were a little bit too long so if you'd like to know more please just leave a comment below and I'll try and answer all of the comments where I can and yeah as always please like and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss a video I'll be doing a few more tutorial videos for sure so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of those and yeah I'll see you next week <music>